Hello. How are you, Bill? I'm doing well. How are you, Bill? I'm good. Hold on. You're not coming through my headset. Let me just, uh, I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you doing, Stefan? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great. I'm ch- yeah, I know it's Stefan because I heard I, I listened to some of your podcasts and uh, and uh, I, I didn't want to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what? I was going to say something, but because um, everyone gets it wrong. So I really appreciate you first off listening and then second off getting it right. So, that's yeah, it's great. good, man. I like it. I dig it. I like the podcast world. Oh, it's a great it's a wonderful world filled with a lot of surprises and a lot of fun and uh, you know, some crazy things out there. You just describe uh, my dating life. <laughs> Let's see, Scarlet. There, oh, there you go. Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, sometimes I'm an I'm a recovering alcoholic and I go to a lot of uh, Zoom AA meetings. And so when I do that, I don't have this set up because you know I don't want all the alcoholics to think they're on the radio. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, because it is anonymous, you know what I mean? So I always just do the MacBook Pro uh, speakers, which are pretty good, by the way. Oh yeah. I was gonna say I use those sometimes as well. They're great. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really good. But you've got such a professional I mean, everything's aligned. Everything is uh, the colors are balancing. Well, it's like I'm at the MoMA. It's beautiful. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you go. How much is this? (laughs) Here's the cash. Make it sing. Okay, just yeah, I don't want to do anything. All right. I don't want to fuck around. I don't want to move lights. Just, you know, Uh, it's even even your hair is perfectly. It's got the colors. Just it's a. (laughs) <laughs> Every, everything else goes to shit <laughs> Just so you know. yeah man oh man. thank you what? for that though yeah adam helped me out a lot we have a guy we got a guy we're italian we got a, i got a guy you know I have a, i'm drinking a bowl of coffee oh yeah and it's uh it's 4 30 over there yeah i would be up all night if i drank now now i've got my jug of water are you drinking a jug of water this, you know, any smaller and you will get pulled over and get a ticket in Arizona. You just got to got to hydrate. I think I might know a little something about getting tickets while I, while I'm intoxicated. So, <laughs> yeah, I think oh. they do. I think they do a little bit more than a ticket, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So um, are we on yet? Or are we just fucking around? We're recording. We're just fucking around. But, cool. you know right. what? We can just dive into. What is it? A comedy advice podcast with your host, Stefan Satani, and very special guest, Phil Tag. How are you, Phil? Am I very special? You make me feel special, Stefan. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> yeah. If you say it, it must be true. Well, I mean, with all the accomplishments that you've got, including your most recent one where you've been the co-host or part of the Ferrara family on the Adam Ferrara podcast, which is a mm-hmm. blast and i hope it lasts while i'm going on this rhyme um but that's where i first found out about you actually because i was listening to it and uh, listened to a lot of episodes and i i really love the interview parts and i love this i was talking to adam about this too on our episode but it's like an interview sandwich where mm-hmm. you guys it's like little family chatting bickering um, joking, and then Adam has the interview, and then you guys talk about the guest afterwards. Which that yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it's uh, and Adam, and I we we've known each other for you know probably thirty years now, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, we're we're uh, it's a big family. It's you know we have Marcus Stern from um, from ESPN over in uh, Washington D.C., and then his lovely wife Alex and myself, and and then yeah, and Adam's you know he he does all the interviews and he conducts them much the same way we're doing here mm-hmm. on Zoom and. Um, yeah. And the way he describes it is we, you know, we like to have guests on then We talk about them when they leave <laughs> Basically, <laughs> is, what we, is what we do. But I love the structure of it because the opening is, is all of us for about 10 minutes, just, you know, catching up. And usually there's a topic that leads into uh, the interview and then coming out, we just talk about whoever it is. We just had Peter Tolan and uh, which hasn't dropped yet, but uh, from the Larry Sanders show. And, and uh, um, yeah, it, it was just so great. And, and, and growing up, you know, as a stand up and, you know, admiring guys like Peter Tone and Gary Shandling and, and watching, obviously, the Larry Sanders show, which was, you know, mm-hmm. to me, one of the greatest shows ever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so cool to, to have these guests on the show and be able to hear them and then comment on them, you know? Yeah, that's that's really awesome. And then going back to the part where the, you guys are talking and have a theme, the one that I got 
intro to the splash I took into the Adam Farrar podcast. I may what? sip my coffee while you're talking. I have a bowl of coffee. <laughs> oh, please. Yes. Lap it up. Yeah. However you want to do it. I can fix it in post if there's too many sounds. All right. So. I wake up at the crack of 1.30 in the afternoon. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember getting introduced to you, too, from, from this theme where Adam had ignored a text that you had sent that was actually a video recording of was it the west wing where yes. where there was a very special speech that meant a mm -hmm. lot to you and you thought oh this reminds me of mm -hmm. our relationship me and adam and you sent it to him and he ignored it yeah and because you know what you know why i'm a sentimental guy and he's an asshole that's why you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and i say that with all the love in the world because yeah he you know because adam is like he doesn't stop he's busy man he's just he's like a worker ant he just moves, 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 moves. And I like, I'm uh, a little on the opposite end. I like to take a breath, relax, you know, mm -hmm. smell a fucking flower every now and then, <laughs> and then you know <laughs> what I mean? And, um, you know, and yeah, and, and things like that speak to me. Like, I'm a big fan of the West Wing. And there's a, it was the, um, one of the early episodes, the State of the Union. Are you a fan of the show? Did you watch the show? No, no, I haven't watched the show. It's a great series. If I was ever on a desert island, they said you can have one show. I'd go, all right, give me the West Wing. I'll watch that over and over again. Nice. It's a great show. Nice. And that that and Breaking Bad, obviously. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and, uh, and and yeah, it's a, it's a scene where President Bartlett, played by uh, um, Martin Sheen, um, mm -hmm. is, is going to the State of the Union, and, and he's talking to the designated survivor, not Kiefer Sutherland, just some other guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And uh, telling him if anything happens, if the Capitol building blows up or whatever, you know, you know what to do. Do this, this, this and this. And then he says, um, he goes, do you have a best friend? And the guy goes, yes, sir. And he goes, uh, you know, do you trust him with your life? And he goes, yes, sir. He goes, is he smarter than you? Yes, sir. That's your chief of staff. And then there's a shot of John Spencer, who plays the chief of staff. And it's just an endearing moment. It's about best friendship. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. And I saw that and I was like, oh, how sweet. So what, what do I do? I, I get my iPhone and I stand up and I rewind it and I, you know, and I hold the phone and I tape it, you know, and I send it to uh, and I send it to Adam. I don't hear anything back from the guy, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours. He's like, I don't know what this is. I don't know. What is this? And I go, just watch it. He, he, he bailed. <laughs> it, was, it was 50 seconds of his life and he bailed. It's I, I, I gave you 20 seconds and I'm done. Just watch the fucking thing. Oh man. Now, now his defense was you didn't label it or give any context about it. Yes. You, God forbid I would trust his acting abilities to understand what a scene is all about. Yeah. God forbid, God forbid <laughs> I would, I would trust that in the man. You know what I mean? He's a director too. We've done a lot of stuff together. Like just watch this. The scene speaks for itself. Yeah. You know what I, so I was on, I'm on your side here because Thank I, you. I am very similar to you where I, things resonate with me and I want to send them to friends and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now about the no context thing, if it's a good friend, like you and Adam or me and a good friend, I would expect them to watch it even without any context. So, right. You know, next time I talk you know, with Adam, Adam, it's Phil. Once upon a time, there was a video. Just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to give you an intro to what it is. Watch it. <laughs> and he says, do you have a best friend? That's the explanation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm yelling. You see what he does to me? He's not even here and I'm yelling at him. <laughs> he has that effect on people. It seems it's great. Yeah, but uh, I, I love him to death. I, like I said, I've known him, you know, we met in, uh, we met in Brooklyn about, uh, I don't know. I've been doing stand up for oh, fuck, 33 years now. I think I've been doing stand up, and uh, yeah, a long time. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old, Stefan. Wow. You do not look it at all. Actually. I was going to say maybe 40, 41. So oh my God, if I was gay, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> Very sweet of you. So, um, you. so you ended up meeting Adam in uh, Brooklyn when you guys were doing stand up. Yeah, a club called Toppers in Brooklyn. It was over a, um, it was over a, a, a gym, you know, actually was it under a gym or it was under a gym. So you'd be on stage and you'd hear, spot me. <laughs> like weights would be falling on the ceiling, you know, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh and it was owned by this guy named Rocky, who was an Italian guy. Just do your time and get off. Okay, Rocky. <laughs> yeah. And, oh. um, and yeah, I met Adam there. And, uh, and, um, and then we did a few gigs together, banging around New York. And, and then, um, you know, I, we, he and I hardly ever saw each other because we both just toured the country doing our thing. And, and we, mm -hmm. we rarely worked together, you know. 
Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then we, and then years later I was in LA doing something. I had a a script deal and, um, he wanted to do a one man show and, and, um, we started like just talking and, um, and the chemistry was like apparent from the beginning, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and, and then we just started writing. He said, are you interested in doing this thing with me? I said, sure. So, um, at the time, you know, I was doing stand up, but I, but I just, uh, um, I'd sold a film, uh, which was nice for my career. And, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so I had a little bit of, uh, you know, I could relax a little bit. I didn't have to like work every weekend. I could focus on my writing, which is what, what I wanted to do at that point. And mm-hmm. so I just followed Adam around the country, <laughs> around the country, you know, different comedy clubs, like watching his act and making notes. And, you mm-hmm. know, because the, the one man show was in, in and out of his stand up, and then the whole story about his family and, you know, mm-hmm. and that's how we hooked up. And I was going to ask too, if that's really cool and about the writing as well. So the stand up came first and then the passion for writing started to come into play or was it? I actually simple? acted first. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. When I was, uh, yeah, I got the acting bug when I was, a, well, when I was a kid, eight years old, you know, I used to actually, when I was uh, eight years old, I'd sneak out of my room and, uh, I loved the tonight show with Johnny Carson. I used to sneak out of my room. My parents were sleeping upstairs in New Jersey mm-hmm. and, I turned the TV on. I don't know what it was about Johnny, man, and all those great comics that he had on back then, Carlin and Pryor yeah. and, uh, you know, and Don Rickles and, uh, you know, all these great comics. I just loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And, um, mm-hmm. and I guess my mother would see the flickering lights upstairs and she'd always come down. Will you turn the TV off and go to bed? You know, and, and at breakfast the next day, he, he keeps doing it again, Philip. That was my father's name. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he keeps watching the Johnny Carson. I don't know. He keeps watching the Johnny Carson, you know? And um, yeah. And I just, uh, I just loved it. And I would do impressions and I would perform for the family holding a hairbrush. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. Then, then uh, as I got older, you know, I, um, I started uh, going to, you know, taking acting lessons and, and I just loved it. I just, I loved it. That's all I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. um. Uh, and then stand up was a way to actually do that. But I never thought I'd be a writer. It was weird how that came about. But uh, yeah, I, I moved up to New York. And, and at that point, I was, um, you know, I was doing stand up about a year. I started mm-hmm. in West Palm mm-hmm. Beach at a club called the Comedy Corner. OK. West, yeah. West Palm Beach uh, ran by um, Colleen McGar, who um, was just great and, and, and gave me an opportunity. And I, and I, I did open mic at a time to where you could get stage time. You know what I mean? Now you got to bring a friend, you know, yeah. get, give him some grease money under the table. You know, you know what I mean? Load it up. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I couldn't imagine doing it now, man. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I opened mic with, uh, Larry, the cable guy and, and, uh, guys wow. like Daryl Hammond and Jim Brewer and Billy Gardell. And, um, it was just a great, a great close knit, uh, guys you know what i mean just hanging out and supporting each other and uh um and then i met uh richard jenny yes yeah who That's i love awesome. yeah it, you know what's surreal about this business it's like before i even became a comic i remember going like do you remember your first before you did stand up like when did you know you wanted to do it did you go to a comedy club uh yeah i went to i was pretty old at this time i was about 20 well not that old but like 20 i was in my 20s and i was living in jersey and we went to the comedy cellar and i was Mm -hmm. like this is incredible i i got in i was enchanted immediately Mm -hmm. yeah 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 oh so you were just a a patron yeah yeah exactly and then i you know i was i started to get into stand-up when i moved back here in arizona however I was doing podcasting as well. And I was thinking, you know, with my nine to five right now, I can really give a hundred percent to one of these. And so I ended up doing podcasting. And then a month later, the pandemic hit. So I feel like I made the right choice for now. But mm-hmm. now that I'm kind of comfortable with the podcasting, I'm going to try and get more into stand up. And I've been able to speak with experts and, and professionals like you, Adam, and, and a whole mm-hmm. bunch of other folks that have given a, shown a light onto some of the hardships, some of the things that they went through and um, you know, some advice as well for, you know, what, what to expect, what to look out for, what to do to help you grow. Mm-hmm. So it's been really interesting. Very, very. Yeah. Interesting. I, that's, what's cool about like doing the podcast too, because we, you know, 
it's as comedians, you know, our default reaction to anything is just to be funny. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, because yeah. that's how we survive. You know what I mean? And that's how we feel good about ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and because I, I was bullied as a kid, you know, when I was in school and humor got me out of that. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to like, you know, state that honestly and talk about deep shit like that on the podcast, which we do, you know, I mean, we mm -hmm. have a ball and Adam and I bust each other's balls and we have a good time. But yeah, um, we do get deep and real and, and discuss like why, you know, why why we react certain ways or behave certain ways as uh, comedians. It's probably because we're older and because we've been through so much. And I guess there's a there's a wisdom that comes with you know, doing this for so long and, and having so many different experiences and what we thought it was going to be early on and what it actually turns out to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. really interesting. I was, I was just going to say too, I think it's so, I mean, the art of stand up is writing and expressing your point of view, but putting a twist on it. So I'm sure that strangely enough that also adds to the the ability to communicate at a level where i think the part where where especially you're talking about the age and experience allows you to be vulnerable and talk about that with a serious layer instead of just joking but i think the communication also can be honed in by the writing and stand up and everything like that so it's an interesting mix and it's really cool to understand how people get into this and and how things like getting bullied or um, using yeah. humor as a crutch or a, a tool, so sometimes a survival tool, um, mm -hmm. it allows them to do great things. And, and it's really cool. And it, it, it's also really interesting to hear about, you know, you wanting to be an actor and then doing comedy and then really wanting to write. And I, yeah. I was seeing as I was looking at some of your sets online on Jay Leno and such, one of my mm -hmm. favorite bits was you talking about your new coffee machine and you sounded like it was <laughs> yeah. possessed or a, or a mm -hmm. demon. And then you're, uh, you know, thinking from a writing perspective, I was thinking, oh, maybe Phil won't be as animated, but no, you, you're taking the microphone and using it as one of those Catholic incense props to be able oh, to- Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. if I, I could take that back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look at that and I go, what the hell was I thinking? You know what I mean? I No, I thought that was great. It got an, uh, an applause from the audience, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no it was good. a fun moment. It was, uh, yeah, but I get what you're saying. But uh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember the first <laughs> time because I did. I do the voice of the cop. <laughs> I remember doing that. Yeah. And um, I wake up. It wakes me up. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. You know, is there a demon in my house? You know, and um, <laughs> and interestingly enough, like I. And that's the way I write. Like, I'll, you know, some guys like Seinfeld and uh, Brian Regan, who's a friend, and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're very methodical the way that they write, you know, and they write it out. They write out the words. And and, uh, uh, and I admire that. But I was never that kind of guy. I'm more like I'll take my iPhone and just record, you know, ideas into the iPhone. And I'll just kind of talk it out. And rarely do I write it down. I used to in the beginning. You mm -hmm. know, as a matter of fact, I have a box like one of the things I did during the pandemic is I took down an old box. I mean, like, I don't know how many notebooks there are in this box of material that I've never like looked at or gotten to, you know, just ideas, you know what I mean? And uh -huh. from years ago, and one of my goals was to go through each notepad and then you know mm -hmm. transfer it mm -hmm. to my computer and, and uh, to see what I have. And like some of the ideas I'm like, what the f what am I like <laughs> like one thing is do we really is chocolate milk necessary and that was it, <laughs> that was it. I was like what the hell was I what do you mean is chocolate milk necessary like elaborate a little you asshole what what is the what's the bit you know what I mean I'm like oh my god it was painful it was painful to look at that old stuff I wish I could be a fly on the wall seeing you get pissed at your younger self <laughs> what, what are you doing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like a Bruce Willis film or the 25 year old me, you know, and then the older me, it's like, we well, you, you slap me in the face, you know, uh, but, chocolate milk, elaborate a little bit here. Yeah, what's the, is chocolate milk necessary? What? what, is, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love chocolate milk. So I don't even know why I would even have that thought, you know, but, yeah. um, but now That's I just hilarious. record it and then I, um, you know, and then it goes in the act and then it auditions, you know, it auditions to be in the act. And if it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I was talking to Brian once and, um, mm -hmm. you know, 
Cause I, I really, cause Brian, are you, you gotta be a fan of Brian Regan. He's yes, great. We had yes. him on the podcast. Just a sweet guy too. He's a great nice. stand up, one of the best and, and also a sweet guy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, um, I was interested to know, like, cause he plays nothing but theaters, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like not comedy clubs, he does big theaters. And so, and mm-hmm. his fans just keep coming back and back and back. And back. So he's got to constantly have a conveyor belt, you know, of comedy, like coming in and out. Cause he can't do the same stuff. And I'm like, how do you even like, if they pay to see you, how do you even try new shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You, you don't want to try new shit on an audience that, you know, it's like going to see Billy Joel and he's like, hey, I'm working on some new stuff. Come on. <laughs> Piano man, fucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, uh, um, and he says, you know, and, and this is what he said to me. He said, what I do is I, I pick a, a middle section of my act and I just, I almost do like an open mic set with like a few minutes of new stuff. Hmm. you know and that's what i do he goes because if you think about it it's almost like the new bit has to follow bits that already work mm-hmm. do you know what i mean it's like following yeah. a great comic with a new joke <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and uh I, and I was like wow that's an interesting analogy and um and uh and then because then the confidence is that the audience if they trust you if they trust you at that point they may like in their subconscious go okay is this like we haven't heard this before is it new you know and then but we trust that something better is going to come you know what i mean yeah it's getting the audience to trust you enough that you could do whatever you want even if you're not even if you're killing 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 and then it's like not killing so much just a couple of experimental bits and then boom you go back to you know the good shit (laughs) you know Mm -hmm, what i mean mm -hmm. so but that's that's what i do so i took that lesson from brian and that's what i do now oh that's great i think that's that's a really good way to do it too especially you know i i it's interesting i was actually looking in phoenix the clubs are still open so they they have performers and stuff and they have some folks they're not at the level of brian doing theaters all the time but like tom segura he, he has three or four shows in a couple of weeks that are just, it's the title of the event is Tom Segura trying out new material. <laughs> so they know what they're in for. Yeah. Listen, yeah. listen this might not work. Come on out. <laughs> <laughs> You're really rolling the dice with your 50 bucks here. So, oh man. Uh, but, but yeah, I thought it was, was really funny. And then it was also interesting to see the first time that I did go to the cellar. I remember I remember Chris Rock showed up and he just, it was a surprise type thing. And then Mm -hmm. he showed up with pieces of paper and was just like, all right, what do I have next? And he was just going through the stuff that he was trying out. And it was just really interesting to see because you brought up a great point. When you only play theaters or people are expecting hits, Mm -hmm. how are you able to test out new stuff and get those, uh, those next hits? I will. got news for you. It happens in the cellar too. Like I used to work that club. I love the comedy. So I just love it. And I miss it dearly. Cause I, I live in Hollywood now and, and uh, mm-hmm. I haven't been back to New York in a while, but, uh, mm-hmm. um, but guys like Chris rock would come in and like, you know, and, and Ray or, um, or Seinfeld mm-hmm. pops in a lot and uh, they get the courtesy. First of all, they get the standing ovation before they even like say a word that blows me like a standing ovation before you do your shit. Wow. That, that, you know, the first time I ever saw that was Richard Pryor at the comedy store. They, they gave him a standing ovation before he even got on the stage. That was like, wow. my, I was 21 years old. It was mind blowing to me. Jeez. And uh, yeah. And then he just calmed down and then Pryor just goes, everybody calmed down and he just goes, I love pussy. <laughs> that, was his, <laughs> that was his opening line. I was the place went nuts. If I could, I would just move into the pussy for a little while. <laughs> It's like wow, I mean, it was that was the first time I ever saw him live, and um, that's amazing. I, I yeah. wish you could get that reaction doing any other thing, like being an accountant. If you're <laughs> le- legendary, and you just get a standing ovation, and then yeah, you just go standing O, and then you're just like, I love pussy, and then everyone's like, Oh, <laughs> this guy, fucking Tom, look at him. <laughs> you know what? I had an accountant that d- did love pussy, so. You know. <laughs> I really don't need to hear that about you. Just do my taxes. All right. I don't, I don't want to know about your sex life, Murray. 
All right, just do just do my taxes. The only thing you I know. want you crunching is numbers right now. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. And um, but uh-huh. yeah, but back to like Chris Rock in the cellar. Um, yeah, yeah. There'd be night. There'd be nights where he'd walk in and the audience would go ape shit because oh, this is why they go there. Yeah, we want to see all. You know, we'll see all the other comics too because they're funny. But but when a guy like that walks in, that's what they're hoping for. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like going to a it's like going to a ball game and hoping the whoever the, the home run guy is hits a home run. You know what I mean? Like that's what you want to see. Yeah. And yeah. um and then and then he gets the uh, um I watched. Uh, did you ever see comedian? That Seinfeld documentary? Oh, no. No, 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 I didn't. It's a really, really great documentary about the uh, the process of writing a new act. Is it recent or is it a couple years old? No, it's about 10 years old, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Jer- Seinfeld okay. basically, when he left the show Seinfeld, he hadn't done stand-up for a lot of years because he had the sitcom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and he just loved stand-up and he wanted to get back. He wanted to keep doing it. He wanted to start it up again. And he... He vowed to not do any old material at all. You know, everything was going to be brand new. And so the wow. whole documentary are the cameras following following him around as he's trying to work this new material out. You know what I mean? And he's oh. bombing. He's bombing it like the seller and governors in New York. And, you know, he's like, oh, man, it's so fucking hard to get comfortable. And and, and um, it's amazing to watch because oh. because of who he is, A, and B, you just see how agonizing it is to try new shit and how hard it is to try new stuff, you know? Yeah. Because people are like, you're a comedian? Oh, tell me a joke. You know, you get that all the time. They don't real, they don't realize, you know, the work that goes into it. And, um, but he was mm-hmm. upstairs, you know, the little comics table in the cellar? Yes. Yeah. He was upstairs with Ray, with, uh, Ray Romano and Ray was like, so you're not doing anything. You don't even, you don't even like warm them up with something that works. <laughs> that works you're like right out of the gate just new shit and he's like yeah and uh and then he goes but you get the courtesy laugh like guys like chris rock when they come in there they get that courtesy laugh mm-hmm. no matter what you, no matter what they do mm-hmm. you know because the audience is just happy that they're there mm-hmm. and, and then it's like okay now show me something after the you know after we give you some courtesy laughs. now you got to show me something and yeah. you're right chris just you know he stands there with a, with his notepad and he's usually got a baseball cap on Right. Yep, and he's yep. not even like he's not even he's not animated Chris Rock. He's just at the mic and he's looking down and he's staring at the his notes and he's just reading shit, you know, and people are like, oh, my God, is this Chris Rock? Really? You know, and um, but then you see him a year later on HBO and then he's animated Chris Rock and then you see all that stuff and what it becomes, how it evolves. You know, that's the mm-hmm. art of stand up for me. Yeah, I, I think that's beautiful. And it's just so interesting too, where. I think I, and maybe I'm generalizing, but I, when I first saw stand up, that's what I saw was the finished product. Mm-hmm. So I guess like stand up, or maybe if someone's a really good chef or whatever, that finished product is what you see. So you're, you, you don't really think about what goes behind it. And to be mm-hmm. able to, I, I really want to see that documentary now because I'm very curious to see what it was like for someone like Jerry Seinfeld to get back into it and then crash so hard and then, and then come back on top because he's, you know, done amazing things since then. And he's got some great stand up. So yeah, it's it, it's you, you'll love it. You, you, I mean, I think you'll love it. It's just it's really great. It's, a, it's just like I said, it's a great uh, example of of building an act and putting an act together. And then you see he's just a comic, man. He's yeah. just a comic, you know, trying to get <laughs> trying to make shit work, you know, what I mean? <laughs> but I get what you're saying about seeing the finished product, too, because I mentioned Richard Jenny. And I yeah. did what you did. I went to the comedy corner in West Palm Beach. You went to the cellar. I went to the comedy corner because I was living in uh, Fort Lauderdale. I was actually a pizza man. And um, and uh, and I and I, I was interested in doing it. And a buddy of mine, Tom Ryan, who's a great comic, lives in New York, done Letterman mm-hmm. a couple of times. Just mm-hmm. a great, great comic. Uh, said, you should come to the comedy corner, man, and check it out. And, and so I, I said, all right. And I and I go there and um. And Richard Jenny was the headliner and talk about watching a finished product for an hour and a half, dude. I mean, so, I mean, that's the last guy you want to see when you're thinking about doing what he does. (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I'm not going to do what he does. Fuck. No, no, I'll go back. I'm just going to make pizzas. Like there's no way. (laughs) I mean, he was just, I put him right up there with Pryor and Carlin, man. He was just, yeah. uh, so, I mean, just a workhorse and, and, you know, applause breaks, like Richard Jenny used to get applause breaks, like not off of a bit, just residual 
you know, we love you so much. We're just applauding for you because we're having such a great time. And, um, and it's such a surreal business that in that moment, watching him and being floored by him, that not only would that become my home club, but a year later I'd be opening for him. And then I'd become such good friends with him, you know, throughout my life and, and, uh, going wow. to his house and yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just a crazy business. You know what I mean? And I loved him and, and, um, and, uh, you know, and, and it ended tragically for him at 49 with a gun. And uh, mm -hmm. it was something that um, and Adam's the one who told me. Oh, I really? Was, yeah, I was in um, I was down in Florida. I was at a Dairy Queen and I was at the drive through and the, my phone rang and Adam said, uh, did you hear about Rich? And I said, no. And he said he put a gun to his head. Stop. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I didn't I guess the, I guess the uh, you know, the, the guy in the Dairy Queen was like, sir, can I hello? I didn't even hear him, you know what I mean? Because I was like numb. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Oh and, my um, god, that's oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you I, have you seen him at all? I I saw a little bit as I was as I was doing some research, and from what I saw, he's incredible. Just, oh, yeah. Ah, uh, forty nine. How how did you end up? I know you first saw him there, but how did you guys end up meeting and becoming his opener and then becoming good friends? And well, again, Tom Ryan, my buddy, Tom Ryan comes into it oh, because okay. when, when, uh, after that night I, I call, I said, Tom, I can't, cause I had met Tom at the comic strip and, um, and, uh, and, and Fort Lauderdale. And, um, he said, no, just, you know, come up and just try what you get, you know? And so I, I started open micing with Tom. Tom's the one who really pushed me. And, mm -hmm. um, and then we met a Dan Whitney, who's Larry the Cable Guy, and and uh, became would become Larry the Cable Guy eventually, wow. and um and and uh and we just you know that camaraderie, you know what I mean, and 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 uh, yeah. and helping each other and supporting each other, it was just a beautiful thing. And um, the comedy corner back then was Tuesday through Sunday, and the advantage I had to starting in 1988, however many years ago that was, the year 20, I was born. 32 years ago. Oh, fuck you, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it in, pal. There you go. Oh, yeah, really? Were you just starting? Yeah, I wasn't even born yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was just warming up in the womb over here while you were. <laughs> I wasn't even sperm, man. You were doing stand up. Yeah. Oh. And, oh, uh, and yeah, and so, um, God, I now I feel old. Fuck. Well, dude, I I have to say though, you look younger than me almost. If it wasn't for the white hair, I think. Nah. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for the white hair and that shit on your neck, you know what I mean? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, and trim that hair growing out of your nose. Other than those three things, oh, you got God. youth going on there, baby. <laughs> yeah, the giant cup of coffee. I mean, you look like a spring chicken. <sighs> <laughs> yeah anyway yeah so it was tuesday through sunday and the advantage i had was that in 1988 was the tuesday night was also headliner night so the okay. open micers the open micers would go on first there'd be five of us doing five minutes each then you'd have a, a middle act who would do uh and if and if we were if one of us were you know were decent we would be the middle act you know mm -hmm. instead of doing the open mic we come back to do the middle spot for like 15 minutes. And then a headliner like Jenny, Jenny would go on or Seinfeld or Dennis okay. Miller, you know, and, wow. um, and that's, yeah. And that's what I, that was my time. You know what I mean? And um, so, so we had, the point is that we had amazing audiences who were there to see a great comic. That was the advantage. That's you know? super cool. Now, the, I guess you could call this a disadvantage. I don't know how heavily weighted it is, but they're also there with high expectations. And to yes. that point, I know that public speaking is still probably one of the most things that people are most afraid of now, probably behind coronavirus, although with some states, I'm not sure. But to that point, how did you feel going up at first? And did you have that? anxiety and did it kind of go away or did you never have that and you were just like eh, going up trying my stuff i never had a problem getting up in front of the crowd again because when i was eight i performed for the family and then i started doing magic when i was i don't know 13 14 i was doing magic till i killed a dove during a live show and i was like okay not gonna do that anymore 
<laughs> oh I'm... no yeah. oh man so you killed yeah. during your first performance but <laughs> yeah I did. The... I did i destroyed yeah i did <laughs> yeah i destroyed a bird yeah <laughs> i um yeah it was this trick called the crystal cylinder and um Oof. you know without without giving it away because i'm sorry stefan the magician never reveals <laughs> that that's right yes yeah the alliance um, code you have to load the bird a certain way and, and i loaded the bird upside down so so and this was my big finale so for a half an hour the bird was like flapping around inside the thing and and his neck snapped oh and uh, i didn't know that i mean listen i i love the bird i didn't you know I, I, i'm like a bird killer you know what i mean right 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 and i and i produced the thing and it was it was a it was a house party it was like midnight and um yeah i just produced it and i was like oh fuck you know and the everybody was just <laughs> staring at me man and, the, and this and this the guy i was doing the show for his name was big mike he was like 400 pounds he's just sitting there <laughs> and, he, and he just goes is it dead bro <laughs> I go, it's dead. I didn't know how to recover. I wasn't a performer yet. I didn't know how to like recover from that. You know what I mean? It just devastated me. Well, I'm and, really uh, glad that you knew it was dead instead of trying again, like picking it up. Ta -da! <laughs> and then it just yeah. falls back to the ground. Oh, oh, if I did that now, you know, it's a plastic bird. Ha <laughs> ha. You know what I mean? And then I would just move on and mourn later. But yeah, but yeah. um, <laughs> So yeah, I never, I already, I didn't have a problem getting in front of people. That wasn't a problem for me, but, but stand up, you know, mm -hmm. like when I acted, I did a lot of plays in college yeah. and, um, and, uh, and that's different because you're reading, you know, you're reading a script, you're reading someone else's words. You don't, all you have to do is remember, you know, when you're, mm -hmm. when you're, when it's stand up, it's you and that's it. It's, it's raw. It's, it's untried. It's untested, you know? Um, so I guess there's a little. I guess the fear is greater. Mm, would, wouldn't you say? I would. Yes, I would yeah. agree with that for sure. I, I think the thing for me was I didn't mind getting it up in front of people, but saying things that were absolutely ridiculous. And now I think it's to the point where these things, there's this subtle line of like, okay, is this funny or is this just offensive? And I'm, I, I don't think I was a shock value comic or anything like that, but it's just these things I usually wouldn't say mm -hmm. at work or wherever and saying it in front of a crowd full of strangers that sh scared me. So, um, yeah, but, but I, I think it goes away with time with anything that you do. So, or maybe it doesn't, maybe it stays with you forever, but, or it's just a matter of like Seinfeld says in, in, in uh, comedian, um, it's so hard to get comfortable. He actually says those words mm. in a car after a bad set. He goes, it's so actually says, fuck. He goes, he goes, it's so fucking hard to get comfortable. And, and I still experience that sometimes, you know, when I, if I, if I listen, there may be a night I'm just not in the mood or I'm not feeling good or whatever it is. I could be detoxing from something or whatever, you know, I could have gotten yeah. bad news, whatever it is. The show goes on and you, you, you try to turn it off, but sometimes your head's just not in it. And, and, um, it doesn't go the way that you want. And, um, you know, but, but the difference now is recovering from that, like live, like I have the ability to do that now, you know what I mean? Like if I use the bird example to comedy, if a joke tanks or whatever, or if I'm just not connecting with the audience, it doesn't affect me as much now as it did before. Like when I was younger, because you get an ability to, you get an ability to overcome it. You get an ability to recover from it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. And in your head, you're like, okay, this crowd's not what I want them to be, whatever it is. Let me just get through this and get the hell off and, you know, go back to my hotel. And, mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a, a a luxury, I guess, as you get older in, in the business. I, I I don't want to say I don't care as much about what they think, the audience. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I don't. Maybe I don't care what. They, maybe I don't care what they think. I don't know. <laughs> you know. I I think maybe it's you care less. You're you're less emotionally invested in what they think in those micro moments. And mm -hmm. it's more of a pragmatic approach where it's like trying to put together a puzzle. And it's like, Oh, that piece just didn't fit. And mm -hmm. um, we'll try and get it next time or whatever. Yeah. And you just keep trying to go at it. Yeah, that's me pulling stuff out of my ass. But you know, <laughs> we all do it, man. You know, we all do it. <laughs> we all have to survive depending on, you know, what the situation is, you know, it's uh you know, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of those. This God, there's been so many. I mean, I don't know how many shows I've done in 33 years. It's just, uh, God, there's just so many.
Yeah, I couldn't imagine, especially since I'm only 32 years old. But there I you go again. It. Just keep rubbing it in, <laughs> Stefan. Listen, you old fuck. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you know, before it's your bedtime, maybe we should wrap up the podcast with the, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it is approaching. Well, no, it's the early bird. I have to eat dinner soon. <laughs> that's, not, that's right. Uh, we're going to get, we did some comedy advice. Now we're going to go into some advice and sprinkle some comedy into it. So I have okay. some fans that have sent in some questions that we're going to answer together. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we get into that, though, I like to get nice and inspired with an inspirational quote. So I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them inspired if they're having a tough day or, um, you know, if they're needing to get motivated. Well, I'm, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a quote from your last episode that I listened to oh. of your podcast because you fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> R Wayne Gretzky. Oh, oh, okay. That's a great. You quote. know what I'm talking about? Yes, you miss a hundred percent of the shots that. Yeah, you 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 always miss one hundred percent of the shots you never take. That's it. And That's, what I, I forget what you said. You miss shots and then you don't take them. You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're almost like Brian Regan. You miss the shots and you take you you don't take the shots if you miss them. What? The <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good impression, by the way. Of oh, both, man. It's like a mix of Brian Regan and then a, a little sprinkle Dude, of me as well. I have a friend. Her name is Sarah. <laughs> She's a singer out here in L.A. And we always play anything as funny as Brian Regan. We always play that game on the phone. I was watching uh, a football game recently. And uh, <laughs> on this, after the game, the female reporter is like talking to the, the star quarterback, whatever. And she's like, uh, hey, can you put into words how this feels? And I go, put it. Then I heard Brian Regan go, hey, can you put it into words? Oh, I don't <laughs> know if I can put it into words. I'll try to put it. I'm not good with words. Can I use hieroglyphics? I don't I don't know words. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, so this is probably embarrassing for me, but the first time I ever saw or heard of Brian Regan, mm -hmm. I guess I had heard of him before, but the first time I saw him, it, he was doing a Q&A for Google. And so mm -hmm. Google, there was this panel of all these guys, these nerds that have PhDs and do data science and all that stuff. And they're asking him a question, some about comedy, some about success. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if the humor, if it gets across to these types of folks and he's trying these things. And yeah, it doesn't translate. And, and he's funny. I was laughing, but I could see him sweating a little bit because he's <laughs> trying to make these jokes. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, uh, OK, so next question. And he's like, yeah. no response. But mm -hmm. that, then I started watching him and, and I was like, oh, my God, this guy hilarious it was yeah because he he was out of his element that's what that is it's like yeah. trying have you done stand-up shows on zoom during the oh pandemic? no and yeah, i don't dude I don't it's want to. It, i don't want to either it, it's just the weirdest you know oh my god every first of all everybody's unmuted because you want to hear the laughs but then you know uh the guy in boise idaho has a fucking dog so you hear the dog and you hear the lady her are you coming to bed you know what i mean you hear that uh -huh. kind of you can hear what's going it, oh my god it's so, i mean it's, they're not all like that but because people are encouraged to you know make sure there's no background noise but you know people suck <laughs> they don't yeah. know they don't everybody's into themselves and you know so yeah, exactly. And I mean, if we can, I've heard so many stories of family and friends that have had a significant other or somebody uh, flash all the coworkers accidentally coming out mm -hmm. of the shower and they don't realize their significant others on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I'm sure it was accidental. I'm sure it was accidental. <laughs> For in my case, it was accidental. I did not know. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I did. Not I'm sorry. Know. I'm only 32. I'm very young. <laughs> you have to forgive me. That's my excuse. I'm very young. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing a diaper. Okay, <laughs> it's it's not weird. I promise. It's not a fact. Oh man. Uh, well, great quote, and I'm glad that I got it. I'm getting it right now, so it's getting mm -hmm. soaked into my my young 32 go. year old mind. Um, yes. So I have a quote too, and since I'm trying to be young, hip, I'm looking not for people for inspirational quotes, looking for robots. And this specific robot's called Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man, woman, hockey player, whatever, and just mm -hmm. weave them together for a perfect inspirational quote. Okay. So 
Phil, I will read this quote. You can tell me how it speaks to you. Okay. Do I have to download an app or can I just sit here and listen? So it's on the iTunes store. If you go, I have the QR code. No, I'm mm. kidding. You can just listen. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll speak like a robot so it makes it more the feeling. No, I'm kidding. I won't do that. <clears throat> you cannot allow ideas to unleash your tears. Hmm. You cannot... do, you want me to res- do you want me to respond to that? <laughs> it sounds like you just got offended by the Spyrobot. <laughs> No, I'm crying. <laughs> that, 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 that idea alone is making me weep. Oh, my God. Oh, tears are being unleashed right now. And uh, you cannot. You know what? It makes me think a little bit. You yeah. cannot allow ideas to unleash your tears. It's mm-hmm. like you can't cry over things that haven't even happened yet. So <sighs> if you're worrying, you're getting yeah. anxiety, and then you start to unleash your tears, which I'm mm-hmm. going to use. That sounds way more manly than crying. Mm-hmm. If I'm sitting next to my wife and we're watching Lion King and then Sim- you know, Simba's seeing Mufasa and I'm like, babe, I'm just unleashing maybe <laughs> one or two tears. Okay. I'm not, yeah. I'm not crying, but uh, yeah, maybe that's it. It's just don't worry about what's not happened yet. Yeah. I usually, rather than tears, I just punch a wall. I do that. You know what I mean? That's what I, that's where I, I go to anger. Stefan, I make up shit in my head that doesn't even exist. And I yell out loud to no one. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. I make shit up. It's the stories I tell myself in my head. It could be about anything about a girl that I'm seeing and I'm, she's not texting me back or whatever it is. Oh you know? man. I love it. Yes. It just brought me back too to the getting angry, unleashing anger on your mm-hmm. past self about the chocolate right. milk. Like the idea that that Adam would not text me back after such an endearing message of friendship and love and sincerity. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know what? I did weep at that. I did. I cried. I did cry at that one. I did. You know that idea. Is that an idea? I would I would unleash many tears from that streams of tears from that, I would say, because I, you know, I don't have too many friends, but it's the quality over quantity. So if I send them something meaningful. Mm-hmm. and they skip over it you bet you bet one or two tears will be unleashed yeah so. especially if it's a girl that i'm dating yes exactly that's and, the worst. Uh, that's especially the worst. if my wife finds out about the girl i'm dating oh there you go yeah that, that yeah you run into problems with that <laughs> yeah many tears unleashed well wow you got married you're so young stefan wow you get 30 <laughs> wow you're married <laughs> i <laughs> i you know i got married pr- i got married at 24 years old and it was right after 23. I was like, I'm never getting married. And I thought girls, you know, girls did not like me because they thought, and they'd break up with me because they thought I was immature. And I think it was because I was funny. Mm-hmm. And so I joked around about things. I wasn't quite at the age where I was ready to be vulnerable. So I would mm-hmm. put up right. that humor shield. And um, why are you dating that guy, Stacy? He's a clown. Exactly. And I was like, do you want me to take the makeup and nose off or, or not? I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so now that we're nice and inspired, we can go on into some of these fan questions. So this first okay. one, it's found on the internet from our fan Simon. And this mm-hmm. question, it goes, <clears throat> okay, so I started working as a dishwasher at a restaurant about two months ago. And there is a waitress there that I am starting to like, and I'm not sure how to go about this. I've always been bad with girls throughout high school. We don't talk often since she works up front and I work in the kitchen, but there would be times when I would smoke a cigarette out back and she would be out there with me and we would have a small conversation. But like I said, I don't know how to flirt with girls. Is there anything I can do? Okay. Um, So so this is like a a restaurant Romeo and Juliet. We've got the dishwasher mm -hmm. in the back. We've got the, the waitress in the front and, there's there's just a, a serving wall between them. Yeah, I just went back to Donna Ratman because <laughs> and Gigi's <laughs> Pizzeria in Fort Lauderdale because <laughs> because I started out as a dishwasher. You know what I mean? But I wanted to be cool, so I wasn't a dishwasher. I was a maintenance conveyor technician. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was. Yeah. Oh, so that's I what w- you need to do, Simon. You know, you have to retitle what you do. You know, whatever her name is, just if it's if it's Donna, Donna, you know, you know, I'm a maintenance conveyor technician. Oh, (laughs) man, I I love that. That sounds that sounds like a a title for LinkedIn for sure. Yeah, because you don't, you know, dishwasher, man. Yeah, I wash dishes. You know what I mean? You know, (laughs) know? but uh, um, 
just go after it, man. Don't it doesn't matter what you know. Watch Titanic and do what Jack did. You know, <laughs> just draw her naked. No, yeah. no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put her on a couch. You know, try to get try to get a multi billion dollar necklace. If you can find one of those, Simon, get a multi billion dollar crown jewel and have her wear that. <laughs> and then draw her naked. Oh God! I just imagined instead of the the hand and the inside of the car, things getting steamy. Just inside of the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, back. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I oh, you know, it'd be funny like a parody film of Titanic, and then you have that scene where it's his hand, her hand, then the hand of an ape, <laughs> you know, or a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? That would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, well, God. I actually, I actually wrote that, but we won't get into it. Oh, yeah. What? Really? No, we won't. You know, I, it needs work. It's a parody film of Titanic. It is, but it's because Titanic is timeless. But uh, yeah, it's called Cruise Ship. <laughs> it's called Cruise Ship. Oh, my gosh. Is I that a great that. idea? It's a great that, idea, right? That's an incredible. I, I'm surprised. I, I'm happy that you're doing this because that mm -hmm. is something that needs to be done. That it's, you know, it's one of those brilliant ideas that when you mm -hmm. say it, it's like, oh, my God, that's totally. Yeah, that should be a thing. It's so. funny, man. I mean, I already did a draft and Adams helped me out with it. And, uh, and, uh, you know, whatever, I mean, you got to wait for the genre to come back. Cause right now, you know, nobody, nobody wants to watch. I, I think, I think it was, uh, that genre was overstated for a while and there were too many bad parody films. So, cause mm -hmm. I'm a guy, I'm airplane. I love airplane and naked gun. Those, yeah, those, those are the too. films, you know what I mean? Right. They're just great, great movies Yeah, and hilarious. Just, I mean, like brilliantly funny, you know? And, um, but yeah, so yeah, you just reminded me of that when you were talking about that scene, you know. Oh, well, that's all. Well, I'm glad you shared the tip of that iceberg with us. And no. you know, next I see time what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, never let go, Stefan. I'll never <laughs> let go. <laughs> oh, well, you know, next time, once it's done, we'll come back and, and you can talk about it more. That sounds okay. Awesome. That, you know what? That's I like you're throwing that out into the universe. I love it. See, I'm a universe guy too. Same. Yeah. Same. Adam isn't a universe guy. My buddy Adam. Oh yeah. man. You know what? If you send me a two minute and 30 second clip of the the once it's complete, mm -hmm. and I will watch it and I will respond and be like, that's great, Phil. That's okay. Great. It's a date. That's it's it's recorded, so it has to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, going back to the, uh, to Adam and the podcast, you know, um, you know, I love him to death. We just, I've known him for so many years and we just, you know, we're always there for each other. Like my father died, you know, he was there and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and vice versa and all that kind of stuff. And so we've been through so many ups and downs together. And so um, talking about a lot of that on the podcast is just, uh, it, it's just, it's cool. And um he, he, you know, I do agonize over certain things because he, he, he loves me so much. He just loves to fuck with me constantly. Like he's always, you know, like, uh, listen to the, uh, Paul Reiser episode. Actually, no, not the Paul Reiser. We had Paul Reiser on and, um, mm -hmm. oh no, the, it's the upcoming one with Peter Tolan. Mm -hmm. Um, I just had a colonoscopy. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm really, I'm really opening up to you now. So. <laughs> No pun intended. I guess I'm the second one that you're opening up to. <laughs> I just had a colonoscopy. And uh, and uh, when I when I was doing the prep, the woman said, uh, you have to have someone pick you up. I go, well, I'm taking an Uber to the gig. You know what I mean? Can, can, I, <laughs> can, I, can I just take an Uber back? They're going, no, you can't. I go, but he, somebody else is driving. It's a liable thing. I don't know. Health insurance. Uh, I don't know what it is. But you have to have someone take you home. Okay. And I live in L.A. And uh, and I'm like, oh, shit. And who's going to pick me up? Of course, it's Adam. And right away, I have an anxiety attack because I know he's going to he's going to show up in a fucking clown car. You know what I mean? Or he's going to, you know, he's going to come walking in. Did, did, did they find the foreign object, Phil? He's going to do something. He's going to do something to embarrass me while I'm all loopy on anesthesia, too. You know? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And so I just I go home that night. He, dro he drops me off and uh, I go home that night. And it's just a barrage of text. Is your ass leaking? <laughs> <laughs> See, you I don't want to hear from my best friend. Is your ass leaking? Let's have that be the one and only time you say that to me, you know, all that's, night long. That's true. But this oh, is what man. he does. He just and he gets so much enjoyment out of it. What a special friendship you guys have. <laughs> yeah, he's a special friend. But it is, yeah. but no, I, I, in all seriousness, though, I feel like it's, 
it's at a certain level and and you guys show that with with uh with shine with possess i was i forgot the word with uh whatever it is but you guys i and the relationship that you guys have is really cool and i think uh, something that a lot of people envy it's it's something where you guys are so close that you guys know each other's buttons that you can push and yeah. you guys can fuck with each other at a level where it's like, yeah, we're still friends at the end of the day mm -hmm. and, and, and we can take it and sometimes we'll get mad, but we'll get over it and blah, blah, blah. And we can make it funny, yeah. which is really special because I mean, I, it's when I have my, my brothers, I have two brothers and we are able to be like that, which is right. really, really cool. And uh, my wife and I, especially in this pandemic, I mean, I thought, we were still going to be close and everything because we were very much in love beforehand. And now we're very much in love, but we're also able to fuck with each other a lot where I remember something where it's like, I was watching, we were watching some trash TV that my wife loves to watch. And I was Are you watching the outlander. No, <laughs> no, we're watching, uh, I forgot what it was, but I, I was like, Oh, that, that girl, she, I mean, she looks okay. She looks pretty, but she's just so boring. And my wife was like, what made you think of that? Did you just finish looking in the mirror? And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, those little zingers like that, that makes me love her even more. So yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah because anyway. you know, it comes from a place of love, even though it just tears your fucking brain out of your head. You know what exactly. I mean? It exactly. Just, Cause he does things. I mean, oh my God, he just, no matter, he can't just like, he came over for the Super Bowl recently. Uh -huh. And anytime he leaves, it's almost like it's reverse child proofing in my apartment. It's, <laughs> it's like the opposite. Cause I have, what did he do now? What did he do? Cause he always moves shit around. You know what I mean? He's, there's a towel where it doesn't belong or he'll put like, you know, a can of tuna in my shower, you know, or, or he'll put, uh, I have this, uh, this eggplant spread in a jar and, and that winds up in my bed. Like in the middle of the night, I kick something. I'm like, ow, what the fuck? You know, I'm like, what is that? And I lift the covers up and there's a jar of egg. Oh, it's a jar of eggplant in my bed. Of course, that's where that belongs. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, just a couple of days ago, I was making, I forget, like a veggie burger. And I'm like, where the hell's my ketchup? And I'm like, and, and I know that I had a bottle of organic ketchup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know for a fact, I was like, what the, f what did I? You know, and then I forgot about it. Two days later, I need something in my desk, in my office. There it is. There's the ketchup in. Of course. Why didn't I look in my office desk for the ketchup? That's where it is. This is what he does. And I'll just keep finding shit. It's, it, it, it's, it's like a nightmare Easter egg hunt that just goes on and on for five days. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I, you know what? I feel like you should chronicle that somewhere on Instagram or something. Be like... Uh... Adam Easter eggs and then mm -hmm. oh here's my ketchup in the in my desk drawer or they or, could write it up like as they're doing the restraining order they could do that <laughs> you know what I mean I was gonna say it could double as evidence <laughs> when you present that court case <laughs> yeah but yeah he's he just he loves it he gets so much pleasure you know and not every episode we do that because it gets a little repetitive but but uh but um but he just loves to do that you know that's too funny man oh man well we've got the last question and then we're gonna have to say goodbye but oh, this last question okay i know as as we um gather our tear ducts for the unleashing <laughs> this question is from reddit it's from fan jen thank you jen she says all my life i've been super plain how do i get used to normal food elaboration when i go to a place like subway or mcdonald's i always order the same thing meat and cheese if I try to eat anything other than just meat and cheese, I think it tastes super gross. This is a problem because whenever I go to order food, I feel extremely embarrassed while doing it. And I feel like a child for ordering like that. Any solutions to get outside the bun? Well, my first thought is I would date this girl because she's damaged. <laughs> It's also a cheap date too. McDonald's, <laughs> yeah, Subway. No Holy shit, Subway, that's all you need. Here you go. Here's a foot here's a foot long che cheese sandwich with you don't like the avocado? I'll have the avocado. Wow. Oh god. Yeah, no that's So she that's... so she wants to eat so Jen, um she wants to eat healthy. I'm getting Want... that she wants to eat healthy, but it's disgusting. That's what I'm thinking too. I mean, yeah. just meat and cheese. That is a pretty yeah. intense diet especially for your intestines yeah well That's if it not... was me what i would do is have a heart attack 
<laughs> so just and then go oh and shit then. now i have to <laughs> now i have to you know what i mean go get some blood work and get that i don't know how old she is but you know that's what i do i go get blood work and go oh shit i gotta stop the cheese <laughs> i have high cholesterol that is a good idea because i feel that's exactly what scares a lot of people including me if mm -hmm. i see my blood work is messed up i'm like oh got to get off the meat and cheese and onto the greens and legumes so yeah. right now i'm on the rob Lowe diet the rob yeah, Wait. I call it the Rob Lowe diet. Yeah. Oh, 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 very, very healthy then. Yeah, he eats the Atkins. That's what he does. He eats the Atkins diet, like the updated Atkins, the low carb. Like I just gave up carbs for Lent. That's that's where I'm at right now. So you could start with that, Jen. Just give up the carbs, man. Because right now my body, oh, after it's been, I gave I gave the carbs up for Lent. Like I do. I'm not like crazy religious. I'm mm -hmm. Catholic, but but I'm not like. Same. I'm like that, that I'm like that George Carlin line, you know, I was Catholic till I reached the age of reason, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I love that line. And, um, and, uh, it's, it's, and I don't give, and I, I don't drink, I haven't had a drink in four and a half years. So I used to give up alcohol, but that would just be cheating. Who, who am I trying to fool if I give up, you know, I'm not going to drink God. Wait a minute. You don't already drink asshole. What are, what are you trying to, who do you, who do you think you're, who do you think you're trying to bullshit? <laughs> you got to give up something else. <laughs> so I'm, I'm carbless right now. It's been a week and my head is like, you know, but uh, I can tell mm -hmm. you that I have more energy from, mm -hmm. from not doing the carbs. So Jen, um, go to Subway and get whatever sandwich you want, but do it on a lettuce wrap. That's my advice to Jen. Oh, yes. I think it in and out burger, they call it protein style. Yes, and you, they, uh, they do. They have that there too. Yeah. I just, just don't eat meat. I gave Adam said I can't have meat anymore. Yeah. I listen to whatever Adam's because Adam listens to his wife, whatever she tells him to eat, he eats. And really? So, and Wait. then I'm, yeah, and I'm the third guy. So, so you're no meat and no carbs. Well, I'm no carbs now. Ah, you know? uh, that's right. For Lent, for Lent. I had to do that, Stefan, because I moved, I just moved in November um, to Hollywood. And, um, you know, when you move, the easiest thing is pizza when you're moving, when you're mm. unpacking boxes and trying to figure out where shit goes, the easiest thing is pizza. Yeah. I found this place near me and uh, I was praying to God, please don't be good. <laughs> I, I want this pizza to suck. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I took a bite of it. I was like, oh man, it's good shit. You know, <laughs> you know, and you have to impress me with pizza because I'm a professional pizza man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was like, oh, so every single night I was eating pizza. Oh my God. It's so good. It is so good. <laughs> it's so good. That is a phenomenal bit. If it's if it's not a bit already, I feel like I can imagine you biting into the pizza, being like, "I hope this is not good." And then you're like, "Yep." Oh, it's yeah. It's in the phone. It's oh, in the phone. Beautiful. beautiful. It's in the phone. <laughs> that, that is yeah. phenomenal. Thank you for that. That's cool. Oh man. Well, I feel like we've given some good advice, so we're gonna plug it up, unleash the tears, and say goodbye. Phil, first off, thank you so much for joining the pod. It was a absolute blast. Yeah, I, I uh, was looking forward to it. Adam said he had a great time. He says hello, by the way, and uh, he said he had such a great time on it. And uh, yeah, and uh, we just so you know, we have, um, we have Emily Wickersham coming up on the podcast from NCI. That's the one that drops next. And um, she's great. And then we have Peter Tolan, which, um, you know, is just a great episode. He's, he's so many great stories about the Larry Sanders show and Gary Shandling. Oh. So we're looking forward to that. But the podcast, you know, thank you for having me on. And, and uh, you got a great energy and, you know, you're young, which. Is <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, we've had uh, we've had Kevin James and we did Joe Buck because Adam and I are huge sports fans and Ralph Macchio. We just had from Cobra Kai and, and uh, nice. Yes, yes. And listen. To that yeah. One. And great. these are like my like, you know, I, who, who doesn't love the karate kid? You know what I mean? So um, yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah. having a ball with it. But, yeah, you're cool, man. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And I was going to ask you, I know you plugged the, the, the podcast, but is there anything else that you've got going on that you like to plug or uh, where people can follow you? Anything like that? I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the social media, just Google Phil tag. And uh, yeah, when everything comes back and is up and running again, I'll be, you know, getting back out there right now. I'm, uh, I'm working on a, um, a limited series. It's a thriller romance. Oh, that I'm very excited about, which is like goes far against what I'm used to doing, but uh, it's an idea that really inspired me. I love ghost adventures and, and all these ghost hunting shows and stuff. And so uh -huh. I, I think it, um, and I think it stems from that. And if you listen to the podcast, the ghost of my grandmother is in my apartment. So, um, yeah, that's right. She's here. She's here, Stefan. 
you, I don't know if you've ever heard of Jerome, Arizona, but no. I, I grew up about 15 minutes away. So I worked there. It's a ghost town. So I worked in what was, it was a restaurant called the Asylum. And it was inside the Jerome Grand Hotel, which is a hotel now. But before, when it was a mining town, it was a hospital. Therefore, chock full of ghost stories. And um, everybody has one, except for me. I did not see any ghosts. But if you stay at the Jerome Grand Hotel, uh, they say that you're bound to see or hear or feel something. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's really cold right here. Feel this right here. It's cold only right here. You get a lot of that when you watch those shows, you know? Something just touched my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the producer again. Shit. <laughs> Yo, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's great. Awesome. Well, if you want to hang around for like 30 seconds after uh, I say goodbye to the audience, awesome. Sure. Or we. Um, well, mm-hmm. audience. Thank you, guys. You guys have been great listeners. Appreciate it. And Mm -hmm. we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye.